I agree. Um, so the, the it's just concern, and we, we can circle back around and have this conversation again because I think this is crossing over next week because this is a money bill. Um, but I think that um, there there's it's just concerning me that these are both recommendations from you know a board that hasn't been appointed yet. You know, three folks that are going to come back with this these recommendations, and then the other thing is is one is is they're just going to consider it. Um, yeah, I, I and, see then that. The, and then the last point I, I'll make is it goes beyond this is this, it's about the conclusion that has been made that the only option that's going to be available for these folks who are in these communities are loans and, and no. loans are just problematic. Uh, okay, well, maybe I misunderstood I said loans that. and grants. I said loans and grants. Okay, well, just scratch that then uh, and I'll just be done. Thanks. But I think you're right. I think we can reword <clears throat> a, a little bit to make it uh, clearer that they, they have to come back to us, not considering reduced, but uh, how to implement a program for um, reduced or um, eliminated licensing fees. And, yeah, then, and, there, and there's, there's some also some yeah. definition challenges there too, because we, we tried to provide definitions and we kind of got slammed for that. But you know there, there's this use of disproportionately impacted in both of those paragraphs. Nobody defines that anywhere in this policy. That is true. That is true. But I don't. Um, I think that that's what we're asking um, the can, the advisory committee to come back with some definitions for for that. That was I my think, understanding. And, and not to belabor the point, but the, the challenge. I understand that we're asking for the ACCD and and others to come back with definitions for for that. <laughs> But we're at the same time, we're using it in this policy uh, to establish a criteria for some folks, folks to come back and provide us a report on something. So, yeah. I mean, I don't want to create a quagmire or anything like that, but it's, it's just that, you know, maybe we should define to the best of our ability, if we're going to use that in this policy, maybe we should define it uh, or use something else. It, and and I, I, I think it doesn't hurt to say that my largest underlying concern with it is, is just the fact that we would need to wait for the CCB to come back to actually advise us on these matters. Um, because right. it, it seems like they would be, um, seems like there should be a way we can get after that uh, before that point. But I've taken enough time. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I would ask you to take it into consideration and please allow me to circle back around with you here yep. on judiciary so we can close the loop on it. Yeah, we definitely will. And we'll probably do this again on Thursday. Mm. Yippee. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you. Uh, uh, I got to uh, run. Uh, thank you so much okay. for the time. I got to shut my door here. Thank you, thank Michelle. You. Um, Senator White, I just yeah. wanted to mention, and I think you know this, but um, some of the other members may not, is the, that term that's used there in Section 3 and S25, is that's the term that's used because it's used throughout Act 164 in yeah. a variety of places. And when that bill first passed Senate Judiciary in February of 2019, um, that was the agreed upon, you know, lang term that people were offering around the issue. Mm -hmm. um, I realize that that has changed, and now people hate that phrase, but and are looking to kind of change that. But in terms of being consistent right now, until there is a new, either an inter uh, you know, the board either fleshing that out and identifying what that means through rule or you directing it some other way. I, we want to be consistent so that it doesn't create confusion around um, these different groups. So. Yeah, well, the challenge is to do it so that you're uh, not discriminating. Uh, uh, you know, that's, I mean, that's, that's, I think also the fine line we tread here is that, you know, we, you know, can't, you can't discriminate. It's a difficult issue, which is, I think, it, why it, it is chose it is. for the board to be taking it up in the context of all the moving pieces. Um, yeah, right. and I think the advisory board working out the criteria is good, and they can they can they can battle that piece out. 
And my guess is that many of the people on the advisory board or who have been um, giving, having thoughts about this have, have some thoughts already in mind and so they can kind of figure that out. And clearly uh, the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance came up with some definitions here. I'm not sure I like those definitions, but if that's what everybody comes up with, um, then I'm, I'm not gonna try start second guessing, but we'll ask the advisory board committee, I think it's called the advisory committee to grapple with that. In, and then, and they, uh, their representatives on that, as Keisha said, uh, people who, who have different um, perspectives. And my guess is that they'll bring in a lot of the perspectives from the communities that they represent yeah. to that discussion. All right. <clears throat> So I would say in a, just um, uh, instead of saying, I think Mark is right, instead of saying shall consider reduced licensing fees. And I think Senator Sears was pretty clear about that too. He wants them to come in with a recommendation of how to reduce or eliminate fees, licensing fees. And then you're rewriting fee, right? So committee, can we jump to um, the license structure? And Graham, if you, are you still with us? You are. I am. <laughs> can you just talk a little bit, um, give us some, um, mm -hmm. uh, you had some, I thought really good suggestions this morning on the license, how to word the licensing structure because um, there are many issues here. There's um, a, like a, the development of a craft license. I've um, suggested a CSA type license so that farmers could actually sell just to um, their own a group of people just like CSAs do. Um, a different license for that. There's production caps. So you had some really good language I thought this morning about how to how to direct them without without coming up with specifics because we can't do that, but how to set the parameters that they need to look at here. And this is not in S25 at all anywhere right now. This would be an addition. Michelle? I just, because uh, the, the members of your committee weren't privy to our conversation this morning, mm -hmm. that uh, in Act 164, it directs the board to um, report back to the General Assembly recommendations um, uh, as to whether the General Assembly should, should add additional types of cannabis licenses, including a craft cooperative license, delivery license, or special event license, or others. And so um, there is already a requirement yeah for them to report back on uh, whether or not there should be additional licenses. So if so, I think what you're talking about is amending that um, and potentially expanding that. Or, yeah, I think why not, gets, why not just let them do their work? And because, to, no, let me, because we want to have them look at some very specific issues around the creation of those licenses. And I think that's what Graham has. It's not it's not, um, okay, Graham, why don't you um, just talk to us a little bit about your suggestions about kind of putting, putting some definition around what they should be looking at. Thank you, Senator. And I can just quickly, let me just frame at least some of what we're suggesting here too, so this maybe makes a little se um, yeah. sense to folks that was asking the other question, but you know, from the beginning, we've been asking for time in the ag committees because we feel like this isn't really a conversation for a three member CCB. This is more a conversation for a, a group of people who are expertise, who have expertise in the subject matter and who can bring in stakeholders from across, you know, the farming community, the cultivator community, growing community to have a conversation about this and to create some scale appropriate and agriculturally appropriate regulations. Um, so we have worked with Vermont Grower System and Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and NOFA Vermont to come up with and trace um, as part of our coalition to come up with some 
broad licensing ideas related to equity. So it essentially differentiates um, differentiates licenses based on scale, which is sort of gets to the craft consideration, which was the CCD was already directed to. Do. Um, but also we ask that they define and differentiate based on um, outdoor production, mixed light and indoor cultivation, because there's a significant difference that cultivators will tell you about in terms of what you can produce, for example, in one year from a, in a temper, temperate climate outdoors versus what you can produce in a controlled environment indoors in Vermont. This is, and this is, this is Juniper. She's, she's trying to eat a little right now. So we have some grandparents here giving a hand. Um, so we wanted to make sure that the CCB, and, uh, if we're going to direct it to the CCB, my recommendation would be um, to put in enough detail such that they're not just required to consider this, but that they shall actually implement and shall um, just make distinctions as we sort of suggest them based on scale, um, based on indoor, outdoor, mixed light cultivation. Um, and... Um, you know, we do have some specific ideas related to the, the craft license tiers um, as well. So what I suggested earlier today, um, and again, I do hope this goes to the Agriculture Committee so we really can have some conversation about this because we also talk about production caps and supply management. And as I said earlier today, folks who understand how cannabis and other agricultural commodities have, what happens when they become commodified is they become um, priced based on economy of scale. Um, the, the basic price point becomes uh, unbearable for small producers. And that's why we have the situation we have in dairy production right now, where you have the huge farms and we've lost thousands of dairy farms because there's an amazing amount of consolidation and concentration in that industry. And we've seen it in other states when the cannabis industry becomes commodified as well. So what we're trying to do is make an industry where as many people as possible can participate and where people can actually make a, a decent livelihood by participating at a relatively small scale. Um, so what I was suggesting is, for example, um, directing the CCB to differentiate, to define and differentiate licenses based on parameters related to um, indoor, outdoor, and mixed light cultivation, indoor um, scale of production, um, and to require them to institute production caps for all scales and types of operation. Um, from our perspective, you know, we, again, we have we have specific details that we suggested around fees, around scales, um, around definitions. But we are also, you know, recognizing the challenges of this. I think that putting directives to the CCB, which require them to implement definitions and these specific um, distinctions, um, is something we'd we'd be interested in looking at with you and seeing how close it would come to getting you know, where we feel our community has asked us to get. Um, Senator White, is that a decent summary? Do you want me to include anything else specific? I didn't get into too many of the details we really say because I don't think that's what you were interested in, but I can give some examples of what we would talk about in the Agriculture Committee. Well, first of all, I'm not sure it will get to the Ag Committee, but you have two members of the Ag Committee here. So um, I, I would say that uh, um, the, the distinctions, uh, the licenses based on distinctions between scale, lighting, indoor, outdoor, and production caps for all of those. If, and I don't know if there are other parameters, I'm not sure that we can get into any more detail than that, but to, uh, to tell them that they need to, when they're looking at, developing licenses, they need to look at all of those things. Um, is, isn't that the way it makes sense or am I not reading this right? I mean, I think from our perspective, sort of similar to how Mark was saying last, the CCB shall, the CCB shall consider, I don't think we're really, we, we would definitely continue to push at the legislative level for specific, more specifics in legislation if the CCB were just considering. We want them to be mandated to make these different, differentiate by these scales. Yeah. This is sort of what equity, um, from our perspective, um, that's more what I was saying. And, and 
you know, one of the things we know we can't deal with is part of what we're advocating for is that outdoor production of, um, of cannabis be considered agricultural. And that's a conversation we think would be really great to have in the ag committees. Yeah. We think there really are more scale appropriate ways of approaching this than across the board, taking all farmland and current use and taking all farmland and agricultural easements um, off the board, essentially taking some of the most experienced growers in the state who have been working for decades to try to afford the farm out of an industry where they might actually be able to make a decent livelihood or have a supplemental crop to make a decent livelihood. No, I, I, I think um, I'll ask other committee members if they have any questions. I think that you're right about leaving the question about um, the outdoor, whether it should be an agricultural crop or not to the Ag Committee, because I don't think we, we can weigh in on that. But I do, I did, when I was thinking about this, I wasn't thinking about that we should, they, they should consider granting, uh, differentiating the licenses um, in these categories, but that they they need to that they need to uh, differentiate the licenses based on those um, uh, criteria. Michelle, so um, I had a question because the current law requires the board to establish tiers within the license categories. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so right now it's, it's required for them to establish a bunch of tiers for cultivators mm -hmm. and for retailers. And then they can, then they have discretion to do it for all the other types of licenses. So I'm not clear on um, when adding something and saying that they have to consider and then report back to the general assembly on, um, on, licenses uh, on the scale aspect, you know, like as to scale, I don't understand how that's different from the tiering that's in there now. Um, so I just need a little more explanation of what's, 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 does that bring? So I can just clarify that because so. Okay. Could you, could, could, yeah. could, could you clarify what you mean by tiers? Is that based on you're talking about size? Yeah. So I don't know if you remember, Anthony, but uh, you know the the predecessors to S fifty four that y'all worked on for a few years. There we had in there that you had established various tiers within each license category. So you might say, you know, tier one is a thousand square feet or less from a canopy standpoint. Um, and then the next tier is this size, the next tier is that size. So, um, and I'm obviously not an expert in the, the growing aspect. Sure. So for me, thinking about it, I think of when you're talking about the tiers, you're talking about the scale of the operation. And so you're talking about how much space you're using for that operation to be cultivating. So when um, so when you're asking to put new language in there about having them identify licenses and like that for uh, related to scale, I'm just not clear on how that's different from what they're required to do now, which is to tier based on size. Well, one thing might be, I mean, tiering by size says I can I can grow on X amount of acres, let's say. Whereas a supply management program that the kind of thing that Graham was referring to would say, you can only you can only grow as much so many pounds per year. Right, I got that, like that on production caps. I understand the production right. cap this business, but I didn't understand what scale means separate and apart from the production caps. Good question. So yeah. Graham or Jeffrey. Why don't I start and then I can hand it over to Jeffrey, but, um, you know, just a reminder that, you know, we were, the idea wasn't to just suggest language around tiers. We have actually specific suggestions around scale and size. And because we can't get the details considered legislatively, we're trying to work with something which gives, you know, language like this. So, um, sorry, I'm just getting some help here. It's pretty distracting. <laughs> um, when so currently, uh, Senator Flynn, what we're suggesting is yes, tiers based on size, and tiers could be interpreted, however, I think, based on the current language 
in the legislation, right? They could tier it based on anything. We've su suggested tiers based on size, differentiated by outdoor, mixed light, and indoor, because they both have substantial different potentials for growth over periods of time. And we've also suggested um, not production caps, in our case, based on um, amount of product, but actually based on um, acreage for outdoor and square feet um, of indoor space, or square feet for both. We just converted it to acreage. Um, and I'll pass it on to Jeffrey just because I'm being sort of distracted and one and I can come back and just listen and see if I can if I can help. Thanks. So uh, one thing that and, and I have uh, I have Act 164 in front of me. Um, and thank you for highlighting that, uh, Michelle. It is on page 42. Uh, if anyone has that in front of them as well, we expand on that. Uh, so for instance, there is no there is no distinction between indoor and outdoor, which is crucial. Uh, which will be developed, if not now, then by the CCB. And why do we bring that up? Um, we see differences in grow ratios uh, by different states. So for instance, I believe Oregon is one to five outdoor. We adopted a one to four ratio, which is what we see in Northern California, which means for every you know, 1,000 square feet inside, you get 4,000 square feet outside. Uh, that seems to be an adequate ratio. Uh, for outdoor and indoor cultivation in terms of meeting production. Um, and I want to be mindful here, you know, stepping back for a moment, we want, you know, we're not, you know, we're pro legalization, but we really want uh, regulation. So that's what we're talking about here. We want to define as much of this regulation for Vermonters as possible. Um, one thing we see in other states is them, and you guys aren't alone grappling with what's legislative and what is in the territory of rulemaking. Uh, and what we've seen a lot of states come to realize after uh, having a mature market is they develop licensing at the legislative level. So that's one reason why we are suggesting this and we've approached it this way. We're also mindful of the formation issues that we have right now with, with, with this law. Uh, it's significantly behind. Um, we think that it could catch up still but we don't want to see these significant delays manifest or materialize with licensing at a later date. The, the CCB has a lot on its plate right now. So, uh, and I think that we all have expressed those concerns. So we're trying to, and I understand that it's sort of late in the process, but we are trying to assist as much as possible by trying to define as much as possible. And I understand um, shifting to suggestions as opposed to uh, having the time to define these, at, you know, uh, through process, I understand that. Um, so hopefully, I spoke to uh, some of the the parameters with regards to um, differentiating between indoor and outdoor. Uh, and I'm, I'm I'm happy to take any questions that you guys may have. Any questions here? I'm not sure where to go with this. I thought that we were. <clears throat> Yes, Senator Clarkson. I, I guess I'm just feeling like we're again. We're I feel like, and I know I'm not an expert on this, but I do feel like the cart is really before the horse. Why can't we just let the CCB get started and then have all these people with these great ideas testify in front of them while they're creating these rules instead of our trying to micromanage the CCB? And we've given them the tiers to get going with. And then all these groups will be testifying in front of the CCB board. Why are we doing their work? Strikes me, this is their work. This is what they need to do. I, I think that the, the suggestion was to just put a few more parameters around what, they, what they're doing. That if, if we haven't clearly defined tiers, um, and if it, we haven't made any distinction between indoor and outdoor and mixed lighting, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I just- but, and, but, can't, but can't that be a conversation with them directly when they're weighing this? Yeah, I yeah, think but, that the, the thought was to put, to tell them that they had to consider this when they're doing it. They're, that they, that this, these are the things that they need to look at when they're, um, considering this, Senator Polina, and then well, Senator I, just say, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think what we're talking about doing is 
telling them that as they can, as they develop their criteria for licenses, they they shall include you know the the tiers and indoor outdoor like they shall actually include these things. So it's it that still means they would have to go out and hold hearings and take testimony and decide exactly how to do it. But we're telling them what they should include. We're not recommending. Senator we're saying you shall do these things. Senator Colomar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Does the CCB have rulemaking authority? That's what yes. they're going to be spending their first year. Yes. Doing. Okay. And, so um, that's what's going to be taking. And, and, and if I can just say as part of that is the, the, the indoor outdoor mixed lighting production caps, that's all like in everybody's rules. Like that's just part of what you do if you're the CCB and you're establishing the tiers and the licenses. That's all going to be part of their discussion. I mean, you can certainly tell them to look at those things, but they're going to look at those things anyway. So I guess my suggestion would be that we send an MOU or some sort of a letter once they have been appointed and ask them to please concentrate on the areas that both Graham and Jeffrey have suggested as being important. In other words, I don't know that we need to get involved on a statutory level. I think they could do it with rulemaking and it's a little bit more nimble than a statute. It's not 100% more nimble, but uh, that way if, if they err one way or another, their, their ability to redo it uh, seems to me a little bit uh, easier than just having to do a whole new bill. But that's just one idea. So well, I guess Go ahead, Sorry. go ahead, Michelle. I was just gonna say, so when they go through rulemaking, you know, I, you got, and you guys probably know rulemaking even better than I do. You probably deal with that pretty, pretty regularly in this committee. So, you know, there's a long process. They'll issue draft rules. They'll take comments. They have to respond to comments. They'll have some hearings. Maybe they'll have some hearings around the state. They'll go through all of that. And that's originally why when you set up 164 was to allow that level of kind of minutia detail around you know what are what kind of security measures should be are appropriate for an outdoor grow that's only a thousand square feet does it need to be the same as what it is for an indoor you know ten thousand dollars but you know like all of that kind of stuff was for the board to be working through through the rulemaking process and hearing from people who want to be uh, part of the industry and getting their recommendations for it. So um, I'm hearing from some people that we need to set some, a little more guidance for them in telling them what they have to look at and from others that we don't need to. So where are we? And I see uh, it's Graham's the yellow hand. Thanks, folks. Um, just in relation to that conversation, you know, one of the reasons we did this um, was because we saw a lot of these details spelled out for the medical industry and in integrated licenses. Um, we also saw details which articulated what the smallest scale of craft license would be. And we weren't satisfied with that. We really didn't feel like it was appropriate or equitable to define it for the most, the already most established and, and, and most heavily moneyed part of the industry, but it sort of leaves the rest of us hanging out to dry and be like, well, just wait for the CCB. They'll articulate, you have a rulemaking process. It's not the agency of agriculture. You know, if the agency of agriculture were doing a rulemaking process, we'd have a bunch of people with expertise in the agricultural field too. It would make more sense from us to be able to speak to the agricultural committees, have a conversation about this, um, make some more clear directives so the CCB can, can make some decisions on but you know, right now, the, we have basically very little for, for, for our constituents to find, and there's a lot to find um, for the dispensary side of the industry. So that's part of our concern here is that we needed to, we felt like we need to reach out and define some stuff because otherwise we're gonna be left out to dry like we were in Act 164. And maybe Jeffrey oh. has some more kind of Okay, let me just jump in and ask Graham a question if I could. If yeah. If we were able to get you to come into um, Senate Ag, and obviously you get two of the members here, um, are you suggesting, Graham, that then we would take further testimony and then Ag would somehow get that information to the Senate Judiciary on, on S25 to be added? 
Um, I'm not suggesting a particular process point. I'm suggesting that the agriculture committee is the appropriate place for this testimony to be taken, for these changes to be made. And we're appreciative that Senator White and Sears have been making the time to try to figure out with us how to most appropriately do it. I think it's more in, in your realm of expertise to figure out like what the, how to do that from a process perspective would be. But I'm open to supporting that and doing what we can. You know, we've been reaching out for two years now trying to get the ag committees to hear this. So that's where we're at with that. Just may I ask uh, a question? Yeah. So if, if we, uh, if this bill, you know, is, is then now going to the House, I mean, the House Agriculture Committee could take the time to do, to, to explore this and, and add this uh, work also. Would, would that make any sense to, I mean, you know, it's, this is, this, we don't have to have this bill in perfect form Right. I mean, it's it, it's going to the House. The House will spend a lot of time on it, as I, Michelle I, already noted. I, I think that Senate Government Operations spent a lot of time on it. I think Senate A or House Ag spent time on it. Well, we could ask them to. I mean, on this piece, anyway. Um, I, I, I'm all for adding a, a something, but I also just feel like we've given CCB the tools and hopefully they're up and running in the next month and it just anyway. all right well let let's see if we can um convince uh egg to take it up Do, what's your schedule like tomorrow i happen to have our agenda right here tomorrow we're going to look at act uh, or s61 uh Agricultural land, land use uh, value appraisals. And I think that's the only thing on the calendar right now. So it might, yeah, I don't see anything else tomorrow. There's a lot of TBDs later in the week. So uh, perhaps the two member, ag members on this committee could convince the chair to take, and the vice chair, who's very interested in this, to um, take this up tomorrow and look at it. And if they can, come up with some language and if not we could look at it again on Thursday well that might be a little bit ambitious in terms of taking up tomorrow um, but I'd certainly be uh, willing to uh, or Thursday to... morning yeah that probably would be a little bit easier to accomplish Senator Polina what do you think I think you're right. I think, you know, tomorrow is a possibility, but Thursday is more likely. Okay. Do you want to contact um, Senator Starr? Do you want me to? Well, I think we should do it together. I mean, okay. So, I mean, I'd be willing to write to him and CC you or say that you and I yeah. have been involved in these conversations. Okay. Yeah. Mention that Graham wants to come in and Jeffrey for that matter, if he wants to. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that you have, um, Senator Pearson has, was very, um, he was the one that um, actually got the um, current use language that's in 164 in there. That's right. I remember that. Yep. I mean, he's the one that brought it up. So who's your so let's just, member? Uh, Corey um, Parent. Corey Parent. So, so just to be just to finish this thought, because I could write him an email soon, but what are we actually saying? We're saying that in GovOps, we've heard testimony regarding the impacts on agriculture that we think need to be worked out before the Agriculture Committee to have input into the bill. I mean, just generally like that. I would think so. Yep. Okay. So you're looking at all of all of the agriculture issues that that the topics that have been raised by the witnesses? Yeah. Are you asking? Yeah, I, or I'm, a, I'm asking because I'm wondering if I'm going to have to staff it or not, or if I pull it. That's what I was just said. That's what I was just wondering too, is whether, whether you were available. When? Well, either tomorrow or Thursday. It, it depends. I have, a, I'm in a lot, you know, with crossover, I'm pretty sure. Bold. Depends on when. Um, but if, you know, a lot of this stuff, on uh, the ag stuff really isn't appropriate for me anyway. Um, I mean, I know certainly, obviously all the cannabis stuff and 164 in and out, but um, if it's gonna go into 
you know, deep into ag policy and stuff like that. That's not really me. Um, so that would be Michael. Right. right. I can talk to him. That's why I was just trying to understand this, the scope of it because the witnesses have presented like a real kind of wholesale overhaul of a lot of the ag stuff. And, and if it's gonna be that, it should be Michael because right. he's the one who talks about, he's the one who handles land use. He's the one who handles um, current use. He's the one who handles all of that kind of stuff. It's not me. Right. Actually, Anthony, okay. I, I just looked at our agenda and tomorrow might make more sense um, because we literally don't have anything else after the uh, S61 uh, consideration tomorrow. Um, we do have something else on um, Thursday. We have a maple syrup at 10.30. Friday, well, well, Friday's probably too late. Tomorrow, if we could get folks in around 10.30, uh, in the morning, it might work. Graham, are you around tomorrow at 10 30 ish? I should be coming out of the House Agriculture Committee at that time. I'm in House Ag at nine, um, so I'll probably yeah, see them. Um, Hi. <laughs> he's just learning to wave. Zoom is such an interesting interactive platform compared to any other screen. Um, but she doesn't see screen really otherwise. Um, yeah, I, I can do my best to be available, and I really do appreciate the effort you all are willing to put in here. Um, I think it would be really helpful and, and appreciated, and I would certainly make a time. I don't know if Jeffrey's available. Um, Jeffrey, what do you think? 10.30 tomorrow? Well, as a, as a guess, yeah. Sure. How about Michelle? Michelle's, Michelle's not sure. I can also reach out to Maddie Kempner, who's um, been working with us on from the Northeast Organic Farmers Association on this as well and see if she's available now. Okay. So how would you, Graham, how would you describe to the Senate Ag Committee what it is you want to talk about? I mean, I'm happy to send you, I think I actually did this weekend already send everybody on that committee um, copies of sort of some of our proposed language summary findings and, and some bullets. Um, and I think I think you all kept, framed it pretty well, though, just talking about some agricultural aspects of this legislation, which are most appropriate for the Agricultural Committee to look at, and which, you know, Senate Judiciary and Senate Government Runoffs have, have felt are outside of, outside of their purview. You've got Graham's email, um, Anthony, Saturday at... Yep, I see it. Okay. So maybe you can cut uh, or uh, copy and paste some of the uh, sentences in there and... I don't know whether the chair will will allow it or not, but I think if three out of the four, the three out of the five committee members want to, uh, I don't see any reason why we could. So Senator Sears is also, I believe, sending your committee um, a request to take it up, and maybe okay. I'll do the same thing from our committee. Okay. Okay. So. Can we, there's one other, Michelle, there's one other issue on here that we were supposed to look at is on page five of S25. And that's the integrated license. So do you want to explain that to us? It's um, section two. Starting on line 10. You, you're muted. I'm going on to one device now. Um, so, uh, so, right. So section two integrated license, remember that integrated license is, uh, is only available to the existing dispensaries, um, as long as they're in compliance with their license and they meet the requirements under act 164, they would be granted an integrated license, which would allow them to stay vertically integrated under one license. under um, And so the way that they work now in, under the cannabis uh, medical program is just under one license rather than having separate licenses for each of the different types of things they engage in um, so that they could enter the adult use cannabis market with an integrated uh, license. Um, the current language basically says as long as they, they qualify and they meet all the conditions, 
um, that they shall be issued the license. There's a there's a tweak to line 21, and I realize it probably just escaped editing. Right now, the current law says there shall be no more than five total license, integrated licenses. That's current law. And I don't know where that not came from. I don't know if the editors put it in there or something, but that, it, that doesn't change anything substantively. The only change is on page five on lines two and three, where it changes the shall to a may so that it would allow the board the discretion about whether or not to issue an integrated license. Um, so even if the applicant met all the criteria, the board could just say, no, we're not gonna issue any, inter any integrated or we're only gonna issue two integrated. Um, whereas the current law right now says basically if they qualify, then they should be issued the license. Um, the thing that's important to note about if you go from the shall to the may, and then it kind of, it, it does have repercussions in terms of the other licenses and also for your funding mechanism. Reason why, um, so the, the way that the implementation is set up is that the first people to get licenses uh, next spring are the small cultivators, testing labs, and the integrated licensees. The reasoning behind that is if you look at the other states that have gone from a medical to an adult use uh, program, they've all kind of let the existing medical dispensaries roll out first because they're already up and running. And that's a way to get some revenue coming in to support the system that you're going to roll out. And so, um, and so the, the idea in 164 is that the small cultivators could start growing um, and the integrated could be growing and start selling immediately to the public. And then the small cultivators, once under that new license, can sell to both dispensaries and integrated licensees. And so you could get the small cultivators into the market and making a profit under the new license rather than waiting until the retailers are online, um, which would be at the earliest October. Um, so if you, if you wind up not having the integrated go early, it also kind of, it, there's no market for the small cultivators. There's nowhere for them. There's nobody for them to sell to. So I just wanna note that. There's also means that you don't have any tax revenue coming in until October of FY23 rather than April of FY22. So just know that that's gonna affect your, your pocketbook there in terms of the revenue coming in. And not that it's necessarily gonna be, you know, I don't know, I, you know, I know there's a big, everybody kind of flocks to it right at the beginning, but why I mentioned the revenue is not so much for the general fund purposes or substance abuse fund, but you know, you're running at a deficit for the board for the, for the first year, absolutely, probably the second year, maybe the third year, because the board is only supported through fees, through licensing fees, things like that. Um, the tax money, you know, doesn't go in to support the running of the program. And there's a provision in Act 164 that if there is still a, a, a hole in the fund that supports the board's work um, that the tax revenue is supposed to go and fill that so that you're not running at this big deficit for years and years. So if you shorten it, it just means you're gonna have less revenue to be able to fund. You're gonna have to come up with money to appropriate to the board to run the program rather than using tax dollars from the early sales to backfill the deficit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So committee, the question this morning was, and we it got um, put off to us about whether we should leave shall or may. And one of my concerns with putting may in there is that there's no criteria for why they would deny it. I mean, they could just decide that they don't like the guy that comes in and um, deny the, the license. So I, wh where our committee have, 
do you know enough about this now that you think you could weigh in? <laughs> um, Virginia, do you want to um, just, where are you? Well, the dispensaries, you know, would like to, re you know, have the shell uh, remain. Um, we, uh, the dispensaries, you know, want to partner with the state. They want to see this get up and running as soon as possible. And, um, you know, having the small growers be licensed to uh, start to uh, sell their products, which would then, I know it was mentioned earlier this morning about, you know, some growers probably wouldn't want to sell to the dispensaries because it would be the dispensaries product. But what the dispensaries have said right along is that, you know, if Farmer Virginia is selling a product to us, it's going to go on the shelf as Farmer Virginia. Um, it's not going to be under the dispensary. It'll be sold in that integrated license. But, um, and so I think, you know, I think really it's, you know, how soon do you want to start getting, uh, you know, income coming into the state? And again, the dispensaries have that ability to, you know, they have an integrated license now, they do everything. Um, and as I said this morning, you know, they don't want to be a monopoly. Uh, they want to work with the state and, you know, recognizing that, you know, there's going to be a lot of other people coming into the, um, into the program. And uh, this will just get some, get some small farmers going, get the, you know, the integrated license going and having money come in to fund everything. Um, I see Graham has his hand up. Thank you. I, I just had a question actually. Um, if you know, one of the things we've been trying to achieve, and this is sort of similar to what you were talking about this morning, Senator White, if there were, for example, a CSA model or a direct sale model where a farmer was allowed to sell the product they produce on their own farm from the farm or to customers through a CSA, would that be considered an integrated license? Would they need to have a license that they'd be doing retail, potentially processing and cultivation and just selling it directly? And I, I guess I want to be, when, they, when, they, when there's limitation on integrated licenses, would, would that be considered an integrated license if it contained all three of those? Or would it have to be called an integrated license for it to be considered an integrated license? My guess is that that would be a CSA license that it wouldn't be an integrated license. Okay, so like in our proposal, we call like a small farm license where uh, anybody who's at a certain scale of production could sell their own product from their site um, with, with a particular type of license which enabled on-farm processing and retail of on-farm product. If, if that's one of the licenses that's developed, yeah, that, that's the way I would see it. I'd see the, I think the integrated licenses there can't be more than five of them because there are right now five dispensaries so there wouldn't be more than that Correct. i just wanted to make if those yeah. other if someone were at some point given the allowance to do multiple functions would they not would that um for example act by the ccb be preempted by a law which said well there's only five integrated licenses allowed and this is functionally an integrative license, right? Like they can, re they can retail and cultivate and process. Um, I don't know, Michelle, what do you think? I, I see that. No, the you would, the way that it's set up now is that if you want to be, uh, if you want to do that, um, you would get a small or whatever size tier cultivation. You would get a, you know, micro, processing and then you get uh although there's not a processing it's more like the there's the wholesaler I don't know that you I mean you could probably just have a cultivation and a retail and have the smallest tier of license for the cultivation and the retail license and then you would engage and do what you want to do which is direct selling to consumer from the farm so potentially they may come up with one license that does that and has some things like that, but you can still do that under the current system. You would just have two licenses. You'd have the cultivate, you'd have a mini, you know, small cultivation license and you'd have a small tier 
retail license. I think we I think we understand that and that's part of the, what we see as potentially problematic is like what is the cost of all these licenses for someone who, for example, is a small farmer they can't compete in the wholesale price world, they can compete by directly selling their product. Are they gonna have to pay the same amount of fee to set up a retail license for the processing license as opposed to having a more accessible integrated license? I, I think that we we aren't establishing fees and I think that when the board considers this, they're going to they're going to consider that if they have different tiers and different for the fees are going to be different for different tiers, you're not going to have the same fee. And, and then it might end up being that there is a CSA license. You only have to have one. They may, they may do that. I, I don't know. I don't think that we can get into that level of detail here. Does that help? So yeah, I was just wanting. To say that yeah. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't that the language around limiting the number of integrated licenses wasn't limiting the the functional integration of licenses in even like a CSA or a small farm license, like you're suggesting. And it sounds yeah. like the interpretation currently is no. Yeah, that's my interpretation, and I'll argue with the board if they don't like that interpretation. Senator Colomore. Thank you, Madam Chair. So are we only to decide whether it should be shall or may? And if so, what's the negative side of making it shall? It is shall right now. That's what I mean. I don't all know that, why. I don't know all, why it was put in here as a may. Um, I see that I'm one of the sponsors of this bill. I don't know why it was put in there as may instead of shall. I mean, personally, I think it should be shall. Makes so sense to me. It was in response to, and I don't know specifically uh, what the concern was, but it's something from the governor with regard to the, um, the integrated or the dispensaries being able to get integrated licenses. So. But they already have them now. No, dispensaries are under the medical program and they're integrated under their medical license. If, if they want to enter the adult use, they would have to get an integrated under the new adult use program. So those would be separate. And, and I think it just goes to the issue of what some of the witnesses are saying that they don't, that they feel as though the, the dispensaries have an unfair advantage. And um, so this was just, uh, I think, uh, somewhat of a placeholder maybe for um, senators to at least have the conversation around the issue of integrated licenses to dispensaries. And did Senate Judiciary just not want to take it up, or why is it? Um, because we were um, as uh, unfocused there as we are here. And it just got, um, I, I don't know how else to say it, this, this dealing with this bill in two different committees and um, it not really having a home anywhere is, um, I mean, it really should be three different committees and it'll end up being five committees if ag takes it up. So I think that's why. And I, um, that, that's my best guess. So Jeffrey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to uh, the consolidation that occurred uh, over the past year. So between uh, S54 S being uh, introduced and then it uh, uh, passing into law or enacting in, I guess, October of last year. Just want to remind everyone that, uh, you know, of the large businesses that operate in the state, um, these are uh, multi-state operators, uh, MSOs is what they're called in the industry. Um, one of them, one of our dispensaries, I believe Champlain Valley Dispensary is the only locally independently owned, uh, but the rest are owned by large out-of-state companies. And there was consolidation over the past year, over the course of uh, you guys deliberating the bill last year, 
uh, Cureleaf purchased Grassroots Inc. These are two large players. I just want you guys to be aware of that. Uh, Cureleaf is based out of uh, Massachusetts and Grassroots Inc. is based out of Illinois. Uh, they are both license holders in this state. Um, historically, they own, they own, I believe, I, I guess, uh, two different or maybe even three different medical uh, dispensary licenses. I don't know how their consolidation factors into the issuing of these integrated licenses come next year. I at least want you guys to be aware of that industry activity. Okay, Chef. So I just, it's almost five o'clock and I'm just wondering, I feel like from my past experience, if we were in the building, we would ask someone on our committee to like have lunch with someone on ag and some of these advocates and sort of help us solve this in a way that really honors their expertise. That's, I'm just wondering if we could spend a few minutes maybe now on like what even makes sense right yeah we, we can but this but this issue is not an ag issue this, what, no, this just is a licensing that. issue yeah this is this is whether the integrated uh whether they have to give them if they qualify yeah do can the cannabis control board just say no we're not going to give it to you mm -hmm. that that's the question here this isn't an ag issue I, well, it's called the Cannabis Control Board. I mean, aren't they controlling? Isn't that this? Isn't, isn't this exactly what they, they're doing? So the question is: Do we give them? Here's here's the way I look at this. We had the if if they qualify, if someone qualifies, one of these five entities. There can only be five. If one of them qualifies and applies for it, in our original legislation, we said, if they qualify, they meet all the requirements, you give them the license. What this says now is, even if they qualify and they are one of those five, you have the right to just tell them you don't wanna give them the license. That's what this may and shall is. And, and these five are independent from the five medical dispensaries. No, they are, are the five. They are the five dispensaries. If you read, it says that an integrated license is only available to an applicant and its affiliates that hold a dispensary registration on April 2022. So it's only the dispensaries and there are only five of them. And that's why there are five. And just so I can be clear is that so with their integrated license, that allows them to engage in all of the activities, but they can only have one location, one point of serving the public. So there will be, let's say if all five licensees wanted dispensary licensees wanted to have, get an integrated, the maximum number of, of you know, retail shops that would be run, owned and run by, um, by just, you know, the entities that also own dispensaries would be five. So it doesn't allow multiple yeah. points. I just wanted to. And, and yeah, it that, isn't. So it, it isn't can't be thing. like McDonald's and have right. like license and then franchise out through the right. state. Right. So As opposed to the towns, five? which are the franchise at the moment, no. there could be 241 no. shops. No. No, we're talking about five retail establishments, a maximum of five here with this. I know. Senator Colomore. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I can appreciate, Michelle, what you said about um, sort of giving the uh, dispensaries a little bit of an advantage over other people. But that advantage, as, as you, I think you put the timeline out, will only last for about a year until fiscal year 23, correct? When everybody Even else last a year, it's just from okay. April uh, of next October. year until October when uh, when retailers. So uh, May okay. five. Yeah. Five, five months, so six, six okay. months. OK, then I want to I want to make it shall. OK, Senator Rom, I, I didn't have my hand up, but Graham does. 
I know, but we're, it's almost five o'clock. Oh, oh, we have okay. to... Is it May or Shall? Is it May or Shall? Yeah. I'd like to listen to other people on the committee because I'm just feeling like I don't know. I, I don't, I'm trying to absorb la last year's. Okay, I'll weigh in. I think it should be Shall because I don't think that they should have the discretion to sit, to just not give it to someone just because they don't feel like it. You know, I'll, add my, I'll add my two cents that the small farmers would have an advantage in the interim by being able to find a new market for their product. So that helps them. And whatever disadvantage it puts the average retail uh, licensee at, it's not going to be forever. It's going to be for five months. And I don't see that as particularly onerous, uh, onerous on them. So I'm fine with show. But is it, sh okay, I'm just confused. Is it shall because... I mean, is, is shall saying that it's first come first serve? No, shall says that there, there can be five of them. There mm -hmm. can be five. And if, if the, whoever comes applies for it and they qualify, they meet all the requirements, they shall be given a license. They can have five, there can be five licenses and there are only five people that qualify for the five licenses. So, it isn't as if anybody's being cut out. There can be five licenses mm -hmm. and there are five dispensaries now. So each of them, if they qualify, could have one. That would mean five retail establishments in 250 towns. And then Keisha, in, the, in October, yeah. when all it completely opens up for any retail licenses, mm -hmm. It's tiered because our experience in getting testimony from the other states was, was to not open all the licensing categories at once because you got to first start with cultivators and testing and then you kind of roll that out. And if you start trying to do everybody at once, you get overwhelmed. And so, or you have retailers that have no products, things like that. And so, um, so it's saying they have to get their ducks in a row and come with their application yeah. and it's guaranteed if they do that and everything's in order. Yes. And everything's in order. And there's no one else that we're leaving out in the interim by doing that. No, because there are only five of them and you can grant five, five licenses. Okay. Okay. I guess I just got lost in what the controversy is, but. <laughs> the controversy is that some people didn't want, um, they think that giving the uh, dispensaries an, a leg up is going to disadvantage everybody else. And I think there was also some fear that they would put um, retail establishments in many different towns, which they can't do. They can only do the one retail establishment. So, um, okay, I'm going to, um, I see that both of you have your hands up here, but I need to get the committee to agree on something here and then we'll, uh, or not, if we can't agree today, we'll take this up again on Thursday. But um, I, anyway, or you can keep um, doing Anthony this if and you I want. Just, uh, Anthony and I just need to weigh in and we need to go soon. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with, to stay with the shell and, and if they work something out and change it in the house, that's fine. But I think for the moment I'm a shell. I would, I would go with shall, and I would also mention that pretty soon I'm going to have to feed my turtle. <laughs> yes, I think that you are right. The turtle needs to be fed. So um, we will um, look at this language again, um, assuming that um, we will have some language. And I will bring the thoughts to um, judiciary in the morning.